Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I love the straightforwardness and the simplicity that, that he uses to teach. His teachings are very simple for everybody to understand. If it hadn't been for this ministry, I don't know where I would be. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This week, I'm going to be doing something a little different, a little special, and uh, I've entitled this, we might change the title, but at this moment, I've entitled this, Where Do We Go From Here? or Lessons from the 2020 Elections. Now, let me just say some introductory things that I'm making these programs two days after our November elections in the United States. Of course, this program is broadcast all around the world, and there may be many of you who think that this does not apply to you because you don't live in the U.S. But I tell you, we are fighting a demonic foe, a spirit of Antichrist that is attacking all over the world. And actually, I've had a lot of my friends that have come from Norway, from England, from Germany, South Africa, from different places around the world, and they've come here, and they live here now. And did you know that uh, they have heard me talk about, you know, how we are fighting evil and fighting for our Judeo-Christian heritage in the United States? And when they get here and live here, they're just shocked at how Christian, how godly we are. Like one of them that I remember said that when they went to a sports event, they prayed before the sports event. And so my point is, I'm not saying that America is worse than any place else. I think it's actually a better than most places in the world, but America is headed in the wrong direction. And the things that I'm going to be saying here, lessons that we've learned, uh, if they apply in America, I guarantee you they apply any place in the world. There's not a different, there, you know, there's not an English devil and a African devil and an American devil. It's The devil is the same, and he just wraps it in a little different wrapper. But we are fighting a spiritual battle. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so the things that I'm going to be saying, I believe that they are applicable to any place in the world. And uh, I th I, so I really believe that this is something good to go on our broadcast all over the world. I also want to say this as introduction, that this is just two days after the U.S. November elections. And at this time, we don't e even know who won. We don't even know who the next president is going to be. And in a way, I'm glad about that for these programs because I'm not going to be talking about personalities, whether it's former president, uh, former Vice President Joe Biden or, uh, you know, the president now, uh, President Trump. It's really not about the individuals. It's about two worldviews. And so we're going to be contrasting some of these things. And so I'm not speaking against people. I'm talking about policy, not personality. And there's a big difference. But here's the reason that I am addressing this is because... Uh, you know, I have been outspoken and, and actually my kind of political involvement, I've always spoken out on things. I've never, I'm uh, to a fault, candid, I guess. Uh, a lot of people think it's a fault. They think I, sh I should be more sophisticated and hold back what I say. But I've always spoken out on certain things. But when the U U.S. Supreme Court legalized homosexual marriage, in uh, 2015, I remember that that just shocked me to my core. I knew that there was people promoting this. I knew that there was a radical agenda that was being passed. But to think that the highest court in our nation would uh, promote that just really bothered me. And I was praying about it. And the Lord says, well, what have you done about it? Well, I'd spoken out. I'd said some things. But I hadn't done a lot. So anyway, back in 2015 is when I started making a deliberate effort to start countering some of the ungodly things. We put out a thing that I called the Declaration of Dependence. And it was a play on the U.S. Declaration of Independence from Great Britain. 
AND I CALLED IT THE DECLARATION OF DEPENDENCE UPON GOD AND HIS HOLY WORD. I QUOTED SOME OF THE STATEMENTS THAT WERE IN THE U.S. DECLARATION OF INDEPENDENCE, BUT THEN I APPLIED ALL OF THOSE THINGS TOWARDS MY DEPENDENCE UPON GOD AND UPON HIS PRINCIPLES. I RENOUNCED HOMOSEXUALITY, TRANSGENDERISM, uh, AND I MENTIONED ALL KINDS OF DIFFERENT THINGS. AND I CALLED IT PERVERSION AND SIN. AND I SAID, WE BELIEVE IN, um, YOU KNOW, FORGIVENESS AND THAT GOD CAN FORGIVE THESE THINGS. I'M NOT CONDEMNING ANYBODY, BUT GOD CAME TO FORGIVE SINNERS. IF A PERSON DOESN'T ACKNOWLEDGE IT AS SIN, IF THEY DON'T CONFESS IT AS SIN, WHEN WE CONFESS OUR SINS, GOD IS FAITHFUL AND JUST TO FORGIVE US OUR SINS, 1 JOHN 1, 9. SO WE CALLED IT SIN. AND WE WEREN'T CONDEMNING THE PEOPLE, BUT WE WERE CONDEMNING THE PRACTICE. AND I PUT THAT DECLARATION IN OVER A HUNDRED NEWSPAPERS ACROSS THE UNITED STATES, FULL-PAGE AD. THERE WAS MANY THAT WOULDN'T RUN IT. AND WE HAD, I THINK IT WAS 80-SOMETHING THOUSAND PEOPLE SIGNED THAT, SENATORS, POLITICIANS, DIFFERENT PEOPLE, AND WE JUST MADE A STAND AND PUSHED BACK. AND SO EVER SINCE THEN, I'VE BECOMING MORE AND MORE uh, AGGRESSIVE IN THIS. AND THEN I WAS AT CHURCH ONE DAY, AND I FORGET THE EXACT TIMING ON THIS, BUT I WOULD THINK IT WAS PROBABLY 2016. AND um, I HEARD THE PASTOR SAY THAT GEORGE BARNA HAD DONE A SURVEY ON BIBLICAL WORLDVIEW, AND HE HAD, I THINK, 38 DIFFERENT QUESTIONS THAT RATHER THAN JUST ASKING A PERSON, ARE YOU BORN AGAIN, HE ASKED 38 DIFFERENT QUESTIONS TO FIND OUT IF THEY WERE TRULY BORN AGAIN, IF THEY TRULY HAD REPENTED OF THEIR SINS, OR IF THEY WERE JUST USING THE NAME CHRISTIAN LOOSELY TO IDENTIFY THEMSELVES. AND ANYWAY, THE SURVEY WAS, was IN DETAIL, BUT THE BOTTOM LINE WAS THAT THERE WAS ONLY LIKE, um, I THINK, uh, I FORGET THE EXACT FIGURES NOW, BUT IT WAS VERY SMALL. 6% OR SOMETHING OF THE U.S. POPULATION HAD A BIBLICAL WORLDVIEW. AND WHEN YOU GO TO THE PEOPLE WHO IDENTIFIED THOSE 38 QUESTIONS AND, and CLAIMED AND HAD EVIDENCE THAT THEY WERE ACTUALLY BORN AGAIN CHRISTIANS, THE NUMBER ONLY JUMPED UP TO LIKE 9 OR 10%, SOMEWHERE AROUND THERE. AND AGAIN, FORGIVE ME, GEORGE, FOR MISQUOTING YOUR SURVEY. I, I, I DIDN'T PREPARE. I'VE GOT ANOTHER BARNA SURVEY IN FRONT OF ME. I'LL BE QUOTING IT AND GOING INTO EXACT DETAIL. BUT ANYWAY, IT WAS A VERY SMALL NUMBER. AND WHEN I HEARD THAT SITTING IN CHURCH, I THOUGHT, GOD, THAT IS TERRIBLE. AND THE LORD SPOKE TO ME AND HE SAYS, WHAT HAVE YOU DONE ABOUT IT? AND SO BACK IN 2016, I STARTED TEACHING ON A BIBLICAL WORLDVIEW. AND MY FIRST FORAY INTO THIS WAS TERRIBLE. YOU KNOW, I DON'T KNOW WHY. I, I USED TO BE SUCH AN INTROVERT THAT I COULDN'T LOOK AT A PERSON IN THE FACE AND TALK TO THEM. AND WHEN I STARTED MINISTERING, IT WAS TRAUMATIC. AND IT WAS, uh, IT WAS LIKE PULLING TEETH. AND ANYWAY, I HAVE COME TO A PLACE WHERE I CAN MINISTER GOD'S WORD JUST OUT OF MY HEART. BUT TO QUOTE STATISTICS, TO MAKE QUOTES FROM OTHER PEOPLE AND TO DO THINGS LIKE THESE POWERPOINTS THAT YOU SEE SO MANY PEOPLE DO. Um, I JUST, I HONESTLY DON'T FEEL LIKE I CAN DO IT. I TRIED TO DO IT DURING ONE OF OUR SUMMER FAMILY BIBLE CONFERENCES AND IT WAS THE WORST MINISTRY I THINK I'VE EVER HAD IN MY LIFE. BUT I KNEW THAT I HAD TO MINISTER ON BIBLICAL WORLDVIEW, SO I JUST KEPT AT IT AND OVER A PERIOD OF TIME NOW, MY TELEVISION DEPARTMENT HAS ALLOWED ME TO JUST TEACH LIKE I'M DOING RIGHT HERE AND SHARE THINGS FROM MY HEART. AND THEN THEY WENT BACK AND ILLUSTRATED IT AND PUT THE uh, QUOTATIONS AND THE PICTURES OF PEOPLE AND ALL OF THE DETAILS WITH IT. AND I THINK IT'S BEEN GREAT. AND OVER THE LAST FEW MONTHS, WE'VE PUT OUT MY FIRST BIBLICAL WORLDVIEW FOUNDATIONAL SERIES. AND I THINK THAT WAS 12 HOURS WORTH OF TEACHING WHERE I COVERED SOME AWESOME THINGS. IT WAS ALL ME TEACHING. THEN WE JUST CAME OUT WITH A BIBLICAL WORLDVIEW SEXUALITY AND WE STARTED DEALING WITH, YOU KNOW, WHAT IS APPROPRIATE BIBLICAL SEXUALITY. HOW ARE WE SUPPOSED TO EXPRESS THAT? WHAT MARRIAGE IS. WE TALKED ABOUT HOMOSEXUALITY, TRANSGENDERISM, ADULTERY, FORNICATION. WE TALKED ABOUT JUST A b BUNCH OF DIFFERENT THINGS. AND SO, uh, WE'VE ALREADY PUT OUT THOSE TWO VOLUMES, AND I THINK ALL TOGETHER THERE'S OVER, well, THERE'S WELL OVER 20 HOURS WORTH OF TEACHING, AND WE ARE JUST CONTINUING. THE NEXT ONE WE PUT OUT WILL BE ON RACE, AND WE ARE GOING TO BE HAVING SOME OF MY 
uh, uh, brothers that are black that will be speaking on this and we will just be dealing with these things from a scriptural standpoint. What does the Bible have to say? How do we deal with this? We're going to deal with socialism and it, eventually we are just going to keep putting out these biblical worldview things so that if a person has a question about what does the Bible teach about any topic, socialism, finances, just any topic, we will have a place to go and it'll be like a reference thing and you can look it up and you can get the biblical teaching that we have. And I'm not doing this only by myself. I'm also including other people in this. So anyway, all of that is introduction to say that I've been getting more and more into this, but... Uh, and, and during the 2020 election cycle, uh, I was very involved. We put a program, a whole week's worth of interviews that I did with Bill Federer, General Boykin, Tony Perkins, uh, E.W. Jackson, and Janet Boynes and myself. And we put that on and we just went through the Democratic platform, through the Republican platform, put them side by side, what they said, not what we said, but what they actually said in the platforms and let people choose. And then I also did an interview with David Barton and E.W. Jackson on uh, the Black Lives Matter and on kneeling at the playing of the national anthem. And what is, how should a Christian respond to these things? So I did all of those things prior to the 2020 election. And of course, you know, the polls, um, I don't know if everybody feels this way, but I've gotten to where I just totally ignore polls because in 2016, uh, they were totally wrong. And again, in 2020, I'm again, I say I'm making these programs before we know the end result of everything. But we know enough to know that they were totally wrong. They were predicting that the Democrats would possibly win the Senate, that they would gain up to 15 to 20 seats in the House. And it was just the opposite. The Republicans gains regained uh, seats in the House. The Senate was held by the Republicans and even though we don't know at this time the outcome of the presidential election, it certainly wasn't the landslide. So I say that to say that the polls have been proven wrong, and I totally uh, disrespected them and was hopeful of an outcome in these 2020 elections. But here, all oh, that's introduction. So here's the point that I'm wanting to start, and I will start sharing from Scripture and doing some things the rest of this week. But one of the things, there are lessons to learn from the 2020 election. And this isn't a pollster. This isn't somebody who can skew the results. We had, uh, at this time that I'm making these programs, over 72 million people in the United States vote completely anti-Bible. Now, that's a big statement, and I know that there may be people who reject that, but I think that we had the clearest choice, again, not between personalities. You can criticize personalities, and I certainly don't agree with, with any person on either side of this issue. There are flaws. We got flawed candidates. But if you look at the platforms, what these people stood for, there were 72 million people that voted for abortion until the time of birth and even after that, allowing a child that's been born and is totally outside of the womb to be killed. Uh, we, we voted for, there were 72 million Americans that voted completely for transgenderism, homosexuality, the promotion of that, putting no restrictions on it, actually increasing the uh, thing. So regardless of who the outcome, what the outcome is and who becomes the actual president, one of the lessons to learn is that America is in a moral crisis. And I would dare to say that at least 50 percent or possibly more have totally forsaken what the word of God says. And they're letting emotional issues, they're letting something else influence them other than the word of God. And so, again, this is not a poll. This isn't what somebody else has said. These are actual votes. And again, you know, it's a standing joke sometimes that there are more people that vote in a certain county than there are registered voters. And so that the there may have been some voter fraud, but but it wouldn't be it certainly wouldn't change these statistics in a real substantial way. 
I would say that 50% of Americans have totally just forsaken the Word of God, have forsaken biblical morality. And that is a terrible thing to learn. It is much worse than what I thought it was. And I think this is one of the things that we learn from this election is that, you know, you hear these opinions and people talk about how America is going to hell in a handbasket and how that we've passed the point of no return. And you wonder sometimes about uh, whether that is looking at just a certain segment or whatever. But I think that this election showed us some things about the American public and where they are. And again, I say this program is being viewed all over the world. But my experience, there's a few pockets of places in the world where there is some real revival happening. But my experience is that America has retained more morality and more of its Christian heritage than most places in this world. So if this is happening in the United States, I I guarantee you it's happening elsewhere in the world. So one of the lessons that we learn is that things are much worse than um, what I think most of us thought. And that's something that is not pleasant and we don't like to deal with it. But you know what? We need to deal with it. This isn't over yet. And if anything, this ought to wake up a sleeping church. This ought to wake us up and recognize that we are the salt and the light of the world and that if You know, Charles Finney said this, that if America ever uh, falls away from God and from the freedoms and the foundations uh, that God established in this nation, that the responsibility has to be put uh, clearly at the feet of the clergy because we are the salt and the light of this world. He said that back in the 1800s. And I guarantee you that is absolutely true. And so this is one of the lessons we learned that America is in a dire situation morally. And another lesson, these are the two main things that I'm going to be focusing on, is that the responsibility for this lies at the feet of the believers and primarily the clergy, the ministers. And I am one. And I've done more than I've ever done. I'm not condemned, but I am also not complacent. And I'm motivated to start taking an even greater stand on these issues because the the uh, way that America voted shows that the body of Christ has not been influencing the world, but the world has been influencing the body of Christ. So let me just start into making some of these things on this first point about that America is in a moral crisis. Let me just use this Barna survey. It's called Redefining the Faith. The actual title of this survey is the American Worldview Inventory 2020. It was done by the Cultural Research Center at Arizona Christian University, where George Barna is on staff there. And this came out on uh, October the 14th, 2020. And I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but uh, this is primarily a survey of the Christian church. And it breaks it into the Catholic, those who consider themselves to be Catholic, those who consider themselves to be evangelicals, and those who consider themselves to be Pentecostal or spirit-filled. And you would think that among those who identify as Christians and uh, that there would be a strong biblical foundation and morality And yet this is revealing just the opposite. Look at this. Out of evangelical churches that were surveyed, 52% contend that there is no absolute moral truth. Now that is a shame. In other words, they say that morality is a moving thing and it depends on the times. Any person who's ever read the Bible knows that that is absolutely contrary to what the Word of God teaches. Morality hasn't changed. God said, I am the Lord. I change not. The Lord didn't leave it up to us to decide what is right and wrong. God is the creator. And as creator, he's the one that established what was right and wrong. That's what this Bible is all written about, is about moral absolutes. Any person who says that there is no absolute moral truth is basically rejecting the Bible. 
They may not have thought it through, but that is exactly what they're saying. If they think it's up to them to decide what is moral and what is immoral, I, this may come across strong to a lot of people, but people that say that, you are making yourself God. You are saying, I establish what's right and wrong. I am God. Man, one of the things that is just so clear in Scripture is that there is only one God and you are not Him. And you do not have the right to pick and choose what is right and what is wrong. And yet, 52% of evangelicals, this isn't talking about the lost. This isn't talking about people who identify as atheists and people who have nothing to do with God. 52% of the people who are claiming to be evangelicals, and evangelicals in history have been the ones who have really stood by that salvation is by grace through faith. People who preach that you have to have a personal relationship with God in order to be truly born again. And these are those people who are considered to be the foundation, the bedrock of Christianity in the United States, and yet over 52% of them reject absolute moral truth. They reject the teachings of the Bible. That's serious. And I tell you what, it's reflected. Matter of fact, if I remember the stats correctly, again, I say I'm making this on November the 5th, 2020, and we don't know the end results of everything. But at, at this day, I looked at the election results today, and I think it was 52% of those who voted, seven, 72 million plus people voted for a party that was completely against the Word of God in nearly every single detail. It reflects this perfectly, and this is one of the lessons that we learned, that America is in a moral crisis and that we have to stand up. We are the ones that God has anointed to stand up and speak out on these things. And so that's what I'm doing. And uh, I tell you, this is just terrible. Another statistic here among the evangelical churches is that 75% of evangelical churches believe that people are basically good. Now, I'm out of time today. But on tomorrow's broadcast, I'm going to show you some scriptures that just completely go against that. For people to preach the dignity of, of humanity, I believe the only thing that gives dignity to humanity is the fact that God values us and God paid the highest price for our salvation. And so that's what gives us worth. But if you just look at man, the Bible says that in our heart we are evil and desperately wicked and I guarantee you, preaching that every person is just valuable and precious apart from God is totally wrong. And yet 75% of evangelicals believe that. So anyway, we're running out of time today, but I've got a couple of things here that I'm wanting to give you. And this is going to be repackaged, so it may not look exactly like this. But we did a DVD, two hours worth of teaching, a panel discussion where we discussed America on the Brink. I've got another uh, DVD in here where I interviewed David Barton and E.W. Jackson, and we talked specifically about Black Lives Matter, about kneeling at the national anthem, respect for the flag, etc. And then we'll have today's or this week's broadcast on here also. And then we've got a musical entitled God We Trust. This is one of the most patriotic things you will ever see. It'll be a blessing. Listen to our announcer as he gives you information about how you could receive this product. Andrew's new teaching titled, Where Do We Go From Here? Lessons from the 2020 Elections is available as a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Included in this four-part album, you'll also get the America on the Brink panel discussion and Andrew's race relations discussion. The America on the Brink panel discussion includes Andrew Womack, Tony Perkins, E.W. Jackson, General Jerry Boykin, Bill Federer, and Janet Boynes. The race relations panel discussion includes Andrew Womack, E.W. Jackson, and David Barton. Both panels share a biblical perspective on important political matters in our culture today, such as racism, riots, Black Lives Matter, homosexuality, abortion, and more. 
On today's program, Andrew also mentioned the theatrical DVD titled In God We Trust. This patriotic DVD features reenactments of significant American historical events along with inspiring musical numbers. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get these products. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. Or you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. I tell you, I'm excited. God is going to do something special during these meetings. I felt that he was just speaking the truth. The perspective is so different. It's so new and the the understanding runs so deep. God has given us everything that we need in seed form and the Word of God has to be sown in your heart. Man, that is powerful. I know that he gets before the Lord and there's always a freshness, even on things that we already have revelation on. There's a today in time word. You have to get to where you believe in the power of words every moment of every day. When you start speaking to your problem and commanding it to leave, that's when you start seeing great things happen. Andrew's teaching and the love that he has for God's word and truth, it is the gospel truth. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I'd like to encourage you to check out our Gospel Truth TV. That's gospeltruth.tv. It's an internet-based television network. And you are not only going to get my teaching, but you are also going to hear instructors from Karis Bible College. You've got well-known people on there like Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, Jesse Duplantis, Keith Moore. These are all people that are friends of mine. We have differences and variances, but we're all preaching the same thing, and it's a safe place to be. You are going to be blessed. So check it out. It's 24-7, gospeltruth.tv. Man, before I came to Karis, I was so broken. I dealt a lot with anxiety and depression. I didn't really realize I could have an actual relationship with God. When I came here, I started to see God like, you know, He just wants to have a relationship with me. It totally transformed the way I look at God. God longs to have fellowship with you. This is where faith comes from. It's not just head knowledge, Bible school knowledge, it's revelation knowledge that changes you. Just been set free from a lot of the bondage I was in. I haven't been depressed in so long. <laughs> Pretty awesome having that just weight lifted and putting on Jesus' yoke. You come here and you meet God personally and then He gives you a whole new direction. This is a time, this is a season of your life that God's wanting to show you who you really are and what He's wanting to do in your life. If you have a desire for Bible college, God's the one that put it there. If you're considering coming to Karis, I just want to say it's going to be one of the best decisions you've made in your life. 